I'm gonna click click like you. Alright, click. Click. I was too close for like this. Yeah, what's the minimum focus on that? Uh, point point seven. seven. Yeah, it's way too close. That's Hello. Okay, you probably look better out of focus anyhow. <laughs> oh, snap. No, I look better with filters. Yes. Filters. Hello, everyone. This is Tycoon Big at Talk.com, and I'm up on a trolley, or is it called tram? Well, they affectionately call it the ding ding. ding the, the ding ding in, in Chinese sounds less childish in Chinese. Yeah. But but is this trolley? It's called the trolley. The tram is what goes up to the peak, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, so we're, we're on the trolley here, and uh, this is an intro to. Uh, John's workshop that he had in Vancouver. How long has it been now? I feel like it was years ago, but yeah, I think months, it was only a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. And we tried to hook up. Um, I couldn't make it, but my producer was able to make it. And uh, I, But I did watch the workshop. Excellent. Thank you. Good yeah. job. Uh, I have a workshop coming up. Uh, end of November. End of November. Uh, and it will be on uh, workflow, workflow manage, management of your images and how to process those images. And, and so much to some degree how to motivate yourself to go and, and, uh, and shoot. Because yes. I think that's often a very um, something that people struggle with. It's just like going out and shoot. I think it's good to have goals. Yes. When you go out. Yeah. Well, let's reverse back to your workshop yeah. again, though. Um, it was a, a great workshop because as I watched it, um, many photographers, maybe one of the first things they would ask in a photo-centric workshop is, oh, what camera did you use? What was your aperture? And there was none of those kind of questions. Yeah. They seemed to be more... Uh, it was a little bit more advanced. You know, I really yeah. wanted to get... Uh, when I do my workshops, I want to sort of get past that and I want to talk about content yes. and composition and creativity yes. and how you can use those three things to up your game and, and do better storytelling. Exactly, and that's kind of what I... Um, I I won't give up too much, so you'll watch the video workshop after this a little bit, but I like that whole thing about touching someone's nose. Yeah, we won't, uh, no, 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 but we won't talk about why, yeah. but you have to watch the video or attend the workshop to know why. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, you have an, a kind of a unique way of teaching, and for journalism, it's, a, it's kind of a... It's, I wouldn't say it's misunderstood, but maybe people don't know, know the difference between photojournalism and maybe what you see on National Geographic. You know, it's a little bit of a different kind of a style, right? Well, Na National Geographic is many different styles of photography. There's, of course. There's wildlife photography, there yes. is some very good photojournalism in there. Yes. And there's a lot of studio photography too. Yes, so yes. National Geographic is sort of the pinnacle of all these different skill sets that often come together. Yes. Um, so I'm a, I'm a photojournalist, so I have a very specific uh, area that I, that I sort of very good. And so in your workshop, uh, even if you're not striving to be a photojournalist, uh, do you feel that most photographers, let's just say they are advanced and they want to uh, further their photography style, that if they take your workshop, what they'll learn in terms of workflow will help them in any kind of a style that they shoot? Yeah, especially with the workflow. Uh, yes. I mean, although, yes, yeah, so my, my work, my projects are and my seminars are geared to more uh, photojournalism. Yes. But also, you, it's nothing that you, you know, it's something that you can take and apply to any type of photography that you do. Because I'm teaching the fundamentals of photography. Yes. And even a good wedding photographer uh, can learn from uh, a good workflow or, uh, you know, really working on content for, for their wedding. Yeah. Well, it's, in terms of photojournalism, we know that there is stor storytelling, a big part of what it is. And storytelling, in wedding photography, storytelling in personal projects, yeah. storytelling even in the family reunion, yeah. you're taking pictures, those make strong pictures because there's a flow to it, right? Yeah. And it makes sense, it's not disorganized And thoughts. they're intimate, you know. And they're intimate, yeah. exactly. Very good, all right, so uh, let's, um, uh, we'll, we'll cut it here, we'll, yeah. do, we'll do little snippets of your workshop. Yeah. But, uh, so the next one, when is that gonna be? Uh, it's gonna be November 28th in Vancouver, at uh, Revolver Coffee Shop. Oh, sweet. And uh, we'll put some links yeah, under the video yeah, about yeah. where you can find out more information. Am I, am I invited? Of course. Am I really? All right. You're this, double, though. Uh, am I really? Yeah. Okay. You mean like I get I get paid double? Is that no, what I, oh, I, I charge I have you to double. Pay? Oh, I get charge? Okay. Well, anyways, if you want to see me as well, and I will be hanging out yes. November 28th at Revolver Coffee. And of course, there will be more workshops following. Well. Yeah, another workshop, hopefully end of uh, February or end of uh, end of March. And these will be all posted on your website anyway. Yes. So if someone watches this video six months from now and yeah. these workshops are gone, there's always going to be workshops upcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So we're going to, you know, 
that's all, and that's all fine in, about photojournalism in the modern age, you know, how you reach your audience. But what's still really important is content. So if you don't have content, wh why are people going to look at your pictures? Content's very important, right? Content is the main driver that affects people's emotions when they look at your photos, you know? So the, I, and I, I have this saying, it's about the three C's, right? So, so content, composition, and creativity. Those are the three things that we're going to drill into your heads today. Content, composition, and creativity, in that order. The most important thing about a photograph is content, right? Whether it's your kids or your grandparents or, you know, a new scene that I go to, it's got to have strong, compelling, emotional content. Now, not everything's going to be emotional on an emotional level, but it's got to have interest with somebody. And then, of course, you want, as a photographer, you need strong composition, and that composition is used to uh, frame that content. But nothing, you know, packs it up like a ribbon on a present without creativity. So you really need those three things for any kind of photography, whether it's wedding photography or photojournalism. You can see there's, they've created this large circle. There's a couple of thousand people. So I have very limited space in which I can move around. There's only about 10 feet. So I have to make the, the best of what I can. And obviously I don't want to stay in this one spot either because then I'll be, you know, I'll have this same image over and over again. So once I think I have uh, the correct image that I like, that's got some good content and strong composition, you have to keep moving around. So I always tell students when you, when you approach a subject or an event, you know, don't get horned into staying in one spot. You know, walk around. Like if I was gonna shoot me, like see, look at this, David's already moving around, he's moving the light around, and you gotta work your way around the audience, you know, or whatever it is you're shooting. And you might see something that you hadn't really noticed before. You know, put on a different lens, don't get stuck on one lens. Let your feet do the walking. You know, and, and when you're also, when you're photographing an event or people or, you know, what's important to them. And so the woman that was sitting in the front row actually still had the suitcase which she used, which she walked through those front doors with when she was a child. She went to the store and refilled it with, with new children's clothing. I'm not sure why, but she still had the original uh, suitcase. So in this case, the building is important, right? The building has a history. The building has been abused. And so you have to frame that up and show that as well. So, you know, I didn't want to move around. I didn't want to be too involved with the people. So I just sort of sat there and I, and I carefully and quietly photographed what was going on. You know, again, the, with the composition, we have the hint of the building, right? It's very hard to work in these situations. So I'm quite close, you know, and they know I'm there. They know I'm taking pictures. They're very involved in the ceremony, but you know, you still have to show respect, and it's still very awkward. I mean, sometimes it's very quiet, and the only thing you can hear is a shutter. It's very, it's very disturbing to to them, and it can make you feel very self-conscious. But you you still need to push through. Uh, and finally, they sort of near the end of the ceremony, they they took down the the porch area, which was very emotional for a lot of people and there was a prayer. And they had a bucket of rocks there and survivors went up. This was the, this is the part I think really put a lot of people over the top emotionally was, and the survivors got up and they grabbed these rocks and they started throwing them at the building in anger. Um, yeah, so this is mostly how we see polar bears, right? In the pretty environment, nice and white and fluffy. Uh, that's, that's really, that's with a 500 mil lens, but it's really, I mean, that's full frame. That's not cropped at all. That's how close he is. And we're just on the other side of a fence. They're just as curious as we are. They come up and they'll, they'll walk around the lodge and check things out. It's funny because if you're sitting down uh, at, at dinner, and I actually didn't have my cameras one night because I didn't realize this was the first night, right? And so we're sitting there and everybody's like, oh my God, we don't have a camera. And so everybody runs back to their rooms to get their camera, myself included. And so you start photographing this polar bear. And they have this track they sort of walk around the lodge and so every 10 feet there's another group of people we move to another window and then another 10 feet we move to the deck and then another 10 feet we move to another window as this polar bear makes his way around so it was a great experience and uh, I'm really glad I did it so um, now that you've all been resting comfortably for 10 minutes I want you to jump up for me and I want you to, to pair off yeah and just shake hands with the with whoever you're there with 
You guys, you guys should, you guys know each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I want you guys, I want you to touch each other's noses. Touch each other's noses. <laughs> no, just touch their nose with your finger. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, everybody sit down. Sit down. It's okay. So, how did that make you feel? What was that like? Anybody want to volunteer some information there? <laughs> Why didn't you want to go nose to nose? Well, that was his first instinct. It was funny. My first instinct was finger, and his was nose. Just right. Different. Did anybody feel a little awkward doing that? I heard a lot of giggling, so I'm assuming some people were a little embarrassed. Nose to nose touch. Yeah, it's a little odd, right? So that's what my job is like every day. When I go in to photograph somebody or get involved in an event. I'm, I'm going in there, I'm going into the other person's space, and I'm, I'm getting in there, and nobody likes to be that close, but that's, that's how I work, that's how a good photojournalist works, right? And so you have to be mindful of that, you have to be respectful of that, and you have to, you have to work with that. Some people are okay with it, some people have been photographed a lot and they don't really give a shit and they're fine. Other people have never been photographed before and they're very, you know, they're very awkward about it. I've had people, you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but I've had people cancel at the last second because I just, I think they couldn't handle the idea of being photographed and being in the globe. All right, so you watch the workshop video, John, thank you. And don't you feel so much more enriched for that? <laughs> enriched. And it's free. And it's free, yeah. but your work, upcoming workshops are not, no. but definitely worth the money. Spend yes. the money, not on gear, but spend it on education. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, and you know what? You made it to the end of this video. Yes. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give you a 10% discount code on the video. Ooh. The checkout uh, code will be Leica, okay? Leica, L-E-I-C-A. Well, you know, you know, it's going to be a, a test. Oh, that's true. That's right. Anyhow, 10% discount code Leica, because you made it all the way to the end of the video. Oh, very good. All right. So anyways, thank you, yeah. John. And thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Maybe you can oh, yes. There you go. All right. Click, click, click.